Hi, I'm Devin Catalano, and I am an animal science master's student at the University of Minnesota. Hi, I'm Dr. Erin Malone. I'm a large animal surgeon here at the University of Minnesota, and we're going to talk about what you should have with you in terms of a first aid kit when you're traveling, going on trips, or going to shows. So this is a first aid kit we bought. It sells for just under 80 bucks. Right now we're going to go through our homemade first aid kit, which is a little bit bigger. It does come in a nice bin, which can be very handy for other things, whether you need extra water in this or just use this for your trash when you're done. A clear plastic bin is always really handy. We have a bunch of bandage stuff packed in here. I'm going to take that out and we'll talk about it later. I'm going to start with the paperwork. She's right in front of me. I do have my phone. It's got a lot of great stuff on it. It's got that flashlight. It's got a phone. But if this goes under the horse or into the creek, it's not any good anymore. So always good to have a backup. A map of your region. Then we have phone numbers of our veterinarian or a local veterinarian uh, or friend. Uh, having other people on there too. Again, when you're stressed, it's nice to be able to call somebody and say, hey, uh, I think this has happened. Can you find me some help? So having things in writing is really good. Oh, here's our vet's phone number again too. So we can find it all over the place, tape it on the box. Might be handy, this is laminated, so if it gets wet, it's not an issue. Otherwise, a plastic baggie to hold your paperwork can be really handy. Probably the most important thing in here is our unbreakable plastic bowl. Can use this for all sorts of things. Put water in it, we can put our antiseptic in it, we can put our sharp things in it, and again, the unbreakable part is really handy. It could be an ugly plastic bowl, this is a nice pretty one, but very handy to have a plastic bowl. Again, this can tote water when it's empty and those things too. Oh, that's really handy to have. We have some nice lint-free towels. Not only great for scrubbing your stuff when you're done, but the lint doesn't come off in the wound, so that can help if you need to clean things off. Reusable, green, good things for the environment. We have a nice flashlight in a case. So again, I got one on my phone. This is a little heavier duty than the one in the other kit, and it does have a push button on the end. The batteries are not in here right now, and that's a good way to travel, because if you don't use this very often, those batteries leak, then the flashlight is no longer any good. So keeping plenty of batteries in a separate pack, it's very handy, they can't run out, and this thing uh, could be stepped on and not gonna be an issue. Duct tape, use that for all sorts of things. A uh, little antibiotic cream. This is silver sulfadiazine, really good for burn wounds, which means it can be used on about anything. My absolute favorite would be stuff you can put in an eye, because if you can put it in an eye, you can put it any place. But they come in small tubes, so they're kind of more the sided tube. So again, not, not as useful as maybe a container or a tube of triple antibiotic. Plus again, if, if she gets a wound, I can put this on her very safely and it'll work just fine. We have some povidone iodine. The iodine in here becomes effective when you dilute it. So you want to make this into a weak tea. So your bowl would be very handy. Pour some into the bowl, add some water or some saline, and get it to the color of weak tea. A bottle of irrigation fluid or saline, you can buy these at the drugstores too. I don't know why they sell them at the drugstores, but you can buy them, so easy enough to get. That'll help dilute or to rinse off your wounds. Our favorite saying is the solution to pollution is dilution. So this is not enough to deal with a lot of horse wounds. And you don't want to really carry that much fluids to deal with horse wounds, but if you can get a hose, it's not sterile, but the more water, the better. Use your fingertip to spray it, or uh, just use it as it comes out. Probably don't want to put on the, the soaker, or the shower nozzle things on there to get a really firm spray, because you could actually shove stuff into the wound. But mud is bad, so we want to get the mud off and it's probably gonna take more than this. A really nice way is to use a syringe and a needle, and you can then squirt that on the wound. That gives you the right amount of pressure too. So about a 35, 60 cc syringe and an 18 gauge needle will give you a good pressure spray without being too strong too. You can use those for a lot of things. Scissors, scissors or your leather man tool or Swiss Army knife or anything like that. Scissors are sometimes really nice to have because you don't worry about cutting things that you don't wanna cut. Okay, so it can slide down a bandage or through wire. Have both of them would be even better. So a, a pocket knife and that. Pliers, shoes always come off at the bad time. And if you ever see one of those come off, they never stay in position. They kind of go sideways and now they're gonna bruise or damage the foot. So you need to get that shoe off. Um, nothing works nearly as well as pliers do. So a good set of those. Plus they can use double duty for your truck. Hemostats, uh, fine tipped is good. 
but anything, basically if there's a splinter or a foreign body or something in the wound, you can use these to pull it out. To sanitize them, you could put some alcohol on it first, or you could just rinse them a lot. I like having this in there. This is a hand sanitizer. It's basically an alcohol-based hand sanitizer with some emollients on there. So you can clean your hands, you can clean your instrument, you can even wipe out the inside of the bowl if you really wanted to. Uh, comes in a nice little carry package these days. Those are easy to get. Gloves, I always like to have gloves with me. Again, more for preventing my skin infections from getting into the horse or for her infections getting onto me if she injures herself. So gloves, these do disintegrate with sunlight and with heat, so you want to replace them on occasion. We have a stethoscope and a thermometer. Really handy to know how your horse is doing. If it's overheated, you can cool him down. If he's got a relatively low heart rate, you're not going to stress as much. This is not the time to learn how to use these. So you need to take these out in advance, practice with them, get to know normals on your horse first. Uh, mag sulfate, Epsom salt. This is for poulticing. So if you think your horse has gotten a foot wound or has a swollen leg, you can use this to try to take some of the swelling out. Another bucket, again, great for trash, great for carrying water, great for putting our foot soak in. You can soak the horse's foot. The bucket might even be easier. This thing might be even easier or a big plastic heavy duty bag, you can soak the foot in that. There's also some foot poultices because we know they get hoof abscesses all the time. So these are great for pulling that out. Same thing for our uh, take sweat on swellings. We have some furazone in here. I use this mostly for poulticing. So if I've got a swollen leg, which is with that, I'll put this on the leg, the saran wrap, and then we cover it with saran wrap and that kind of helps to draw out the swelling. I don't use this as much on the wounds. I much prefer the triple antibiotic or the silver sulfadiazine. These antibiotic solutions actually don't kill all bacteria, so these multi-use containers can grow something sometimes. So good for superficial wounds, good for swellings, not necessarily good for deep wounds that you're worried about getting into important structures like joints. Tape, you always need tape. And then we'll add this to our bandage stuff. And the last thing in here is some diapers, very absorbent. So work much better than the stuff they make for people for little wounds because these will soak up a lot of blood or a lot of wounds and can be useful. Okay, we're going to move on and talk about the bandage stuff and we'll put some of this stuff away as we go. Again, everybody's got their preferences for bandaging, but having some basics in your kit can be really handy. Once the wound is cleaned with our plastic bowl and everything, we will usually try to protect it from any further contamination or injury in the trailer. So we do like the non-stick pads next to the wound. Nothing worse than getting the bleeding to stop and then ripping off a sticky pad and pulling the clot off and they start bleeding again. But then you need some way to hold them onto the leg. So once he stops moving around, this is a non-sterile, very cheap wrap. It's also, uh, doesn't stretch very much. So you wanna be careful how you use that. These little sterile bandages come sterile, so you don't have to worry about contamination. They come really clean, and they're nice and soft and stretchy. So this is my preferred way to hold those non-stick pads on the leg. And we can use this if we need extra security for it too. Before we do any tight wraps, like a vet wrap, we want to have some padding on the legs so we don't injure the tendons. Carrying things like pre-made bandages is really handy. Trying to mess with cotton out there when it's wet and you got burrs around is no fun. These ones, hind leg size, front leg size, you can cut it in half for pony size. You can do that in advance too if you need to, so you're ready to go. Scissors aren't gonna get through this. This is where it's handy to have your knife if you wanna cut it down. Usually you can get a couple bandages out of these too, so good to have around disturbing all your packing. And then hold that in place with, usually with vet wrap is our favorite one. So you can get this pretty snug, but you want your bandage to be smooth. So just try to avoid the wrinkles. And those are clean too as they come out. I haven't found any good replacement for Elasticon. It's expensive, but worth it. So it will hold your bandage up and it will protect stuff from going up your bandage at the bottom. You don't need to bandage the leg in it. That would be a little cost prohibitive, but this will stick on there. If it gets hot, it gets really sticky. So you may again want to pull this out in the hot summer months or keep it in your glove compartment or something so you can find it and not have it in the back with everything hot. This is a nice little one layer bandage, probably um, very helpful for wounds, smaller wounds, but you probably use it more on later healing stuff that's getting injured. Duct tape, good for everything. Have a roll or two of that in there. If your vet wrap isn't holding on, anything can help hold the bandage in place. 
And then these are PVC pipes, so you can get pretty cheaply. These are cut in half and filed down so they don't bother anything, and they're really good for splinting. Your arm, please, ma'am. So again, the horse's leg, you can keep it stretched out. So you bandage the leg, put this on there, use your duct tape to hold it in place, and that will act as a splint for your horse. The human splints that they've got for traveling, great for humans, not strong enough for horses. Okay, a couple things to talk about as far as maintaining your kit. Obviously, if you use stuff, you wanna replace it. But as we mentioned, going through every once in a while, making sure your gloves haven't disintegrated beyond use, and checking expiration dates. So there should always be an expiration date on the important stuff. If you're carrying drugs such as butorbanamine or antibiotics, you wanna check those too. They should always come with a prescription label that tells you how long they're good for. Generally, don't give drugs until you talk to your veterinarian first to make sure it's okay. So again, go through your kit, put a note on your calendar, check it every six months, make sure everything's still functional and you've got everything you need and nothing's expired so you aren't worried about, oh, it's expired, now what do I do? Do I risk it or not? So you're ready to go. All right, so in conclusion, we should be seeing on your screen a list of items we've included in our first aid kit. You can definitely add more. There's a lot of things, but there's a reason behind every single one of them we've got on the list. In addition, we've got a link on there. You can see other things we recommend for being prepared for first aid emergencies in your horse. Thank you.